Has your child started to accumulate too many toys and you're not exactly sure what to do with all of them? Well, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to set up your shelves as well as do toy rotations. My son has two toy box subscriptions. He has both the KiwiCo Panda Crates as well as the Love Every Play Kits. So that's a lot of toys. Every two months, he gets new toys from both these companies. And if we had placed everything on these shelves for him to play with, there won't actually be any room left on the shelf. It'll just be a bunch of toys and it'll be very chaotic. So if the shelves are overcrowded, it's really hard for the child to be able to concentrate. And we know that concentration is very important in Montessori. Maria Montessori found that when children were able to concentrate, they had great joy and satisfaction in their work. So the shelves that I'm actually using right now are not Montessori shelves. They're IKEA shelves, the Trollfast series that I repurposed. Um, I actually made a video about this. If you want to learn more about it, you can check that out. Generally, you want one toy or one activity in one of these little cupboards so that the child does not get overwhelmed. So what I mean by one activity per section is if you look at this little section right here, you notice that I actually have two different types of toys, but they're both the same thing. They're both shakers. Since both these toys are similar concept, it's okay to put them both here. However, I would not put a third toy here because that would actually make the cover a little bit too overcrowded. Overall, I found that my son really enjoys actually removing the toys from the shelf himself. I've noticed that actually sometimes if I don't clean up his room um, and the toys are everywhere, um, he actually doesn't play with some of the toys when they're all messy now like that. But if they're on the shelf, he'll play with them. And another thing about overcrowded cubicles, I've noticed that if any cubicle gets overcrowded, um, like if I put too many toys in it, he'll actually ignore that cubicle and just play with another uh, section. For any toys that aren't on the shelf, we actually have these little containers like these and we put them in here. However you store the toys away is up to you. However, me and my wife found that it was super convenient to have um, a little plastic container with a lid where we can put all the toys not in use so that we can actually um, just keep them in better condition as well. And it also helps whenever we're doing toy rotations. Young children anywhere from birth to about six year old actually have an incredible sense of order that can actually be disrupted if uh, there's too much change. With toy rotations, you have to be very careful to not change the toys out too frequently as well as nothing too dramatic. So you don't want to change out more than one or two toys at a time. Um, otherwise, this might be a little bit too disruptive for your child. You're probably thinking right now, well, which toy should I rotate out and how often should I rotate these toys? Well, the answer isn't that simple. It's not like a set time frame, like once a week or every other month or something like that. Um, what you're going to have to do is actually watch your child. In the beginning, it's going to be a little bit tougher because you're not sure what toys your child likes. So it's going to be a little bit more of an experiment in the beginning. So just select some random toys and put it on the shelves. I found that there are two reasons to actually rotate the toys. The first one being, um, if your child isn't interested in the toy. The toy that he's not playing with is actually safe to be rotated out. There could be many reasons why your child isn't playing with that toy right now. Um, usually it could be anywhere from that the specific toy is actually a little bit too advanced for your child, or maybe it's vice versa. Your child thinks that the little toy is just a little bit too easy for him. Another reason to rotate a toy out is if your child has actually mastered a toy. I do have to say you have to be very careful when removing toys that your child has mastered because you want to make sure that you're removing a toy that he not only mastered, but he's also no longer interested in it. Um, last thing you want to do is remove a toy that he's mastered, but he enjoys playing with. So as I previously mentioned, you don't want to rotate a toy that your child has mastered and enjoys playing with still. Um, however, there are exceptions to this. Um, for example, my son really loves playing with this toy here. Um, basically, it's a very simple one where you just drop the ball in here and then the ball rolls out. Um, he loves playing with this toy. Um, this is still probably one of his favorite ones, but we rotated it out. The reason why we rotated it out, because we actually got the more advanced version of it from Love Every. This one, um, you put the ball in and the ball doesn't actually roll out anywhere. What you have to do is pull it over and then you'll see the ball again. In a situation like this, it's okay to actually do the toy rotation of this one out with this one in because they're similar enough um, with this one actually having a new uh, set of skills for my child to learn. A toy that's rotated out isn't actually put into permanent storage or anything. Um, you can actually reintroduce it later to your child um, because the, maybe at the time the concept of that toy was just a little bit too advanced for them. 
um, so you can actually reintroduce it to them later and they'll learn to enjoy it. For example, my son, when we first got this little pull truck, he actually was not very interested in it. Um, he didn't play with it or touch it at all. Um, we reintroduced it to him recently and now he actually likes kind of just playing with it. He hasn't mastered that idea of pulling a toy around, however he is interested in the toy now. Every time we've done a toy rotation, my son has noticed the new toy put on the shelf pretty much immediately. He would gravitate towards the new toy and at least check it out and see if he likes it or not. So give or take, every time you do a toy rotation, even though the toy might be an old toy, um, it's actually gonna feel like a new toy to your child. Let me know down below in the comment section what you think about toy rotation and if it's something that you think will help you and your child. And if you like this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you want to catch more content like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.